So today I want to talk all about tabs and a couple of key mistakes that people make and how you can modify yours properly. So the first thing when you're getting a tab obviously is the size, what size do you need? So I can't tell you, you know, you need a small, medium, a large or whatever. Obviously, if you've got larger hands, you're more likely to need a large tab. The key thing is when you're looking at the leather, and this is why I'd encourage you to maybe try like a friend's tab or something before you buy one because they're kind of expensive. But when you're looking at the leather, ideally on the bottom part here, if you look at the leather on this tab, where the bottom part of the leather is here, it's not extending too far past my ring finger here. So you can see that the leather is around about the same level and also the metal of the tab here is around about the same level as my ring finger. So that's, you know, it's not extending too far past my finger there. Also on the top index finger, you can see the tab here, it's not too much past the top here. So, you know, there's not too much of the metal and the leather here. Also, for me, the tab is not extending too far back into my hand. So for me, this small size tab, this win and win, the Weowis EZ and the EZR tabs, they run a little bit on the large size. So normally for other tabs before I got this one, I need a medium, but for this one I needed a small. So I definitely encourage you to try the tabs first, um, but really you're looking for something that feels fairly minimal in the hand and it feels like you're not being obstructed in any way. That's the key thing here. You don't want, if the metal of the tab is starting to extend too far past the finger here, then that's a no-no because basically the tab will hit your jawbone and there'll be a gap between your index finger and the tab. So those are some kind of considerations to think about when it comes to the sizing, but you do definitely need to try the tab yourself and maybe try a friend's before you buy one. So now the second part is obviously trimming the leather of your tab to the right size because depending on your finger length, that kind of thing, you'll need it a different size. So the first thing is the length of the leather here. So the best way to look at this is if you curl your fingers like this, if you curl your fingers, you want a nice straight line between the edge of the leather and your finger. So here you can see there's a straight line between the leather and the finger. So that in the curled position, shows that the tab leather is a good length. If, like I said before, if the leather was extending to here, when my fingers are straight, that means when I curl the tab, the leather would be coming out to here, which will be far, <laughs> far too long with the leather and it will cause all sorts of issues. So that's the first thing in terms of the length and that applies to all three fingers, obviously. So another thing people ask a lot with tabs is, what should I use? Should I use a spacer? You can get shelves for your anchor. You can get hooks at the bottom here that you place here to, to hook your little finger on. Um, you can get kind of spoon attachments that go to the back here and they go along your, your wrist. So what should I use? Uh, and the answer is I can't give you an answer to that because it is individual and what you need to do is try them out. So for me personally, I've tried pretty much all of those different variations. Um, you know, the shelf, the, you know, all of them, and you need to try it out and see what works for you. The best way to do this is use a light bow, try different things, but crucially, draw up and find your anchor and see which one gives you the anchor that you want and closes the gap on the neck. So as you can see from this behind shot of the archer, you want the, the gap closed to the neck. If, for example, you have the spoon attachment that's going along your wrist here, and that means that you know it's not allowing you to close that gap, then that's probably not a good thing for you. Likewise, if you've got the pinky finger attachment, but it's meaning that you are grabbing with the pinky finger, because this is a common thing that can happen. Uh, and generally, to be honest, this is why I generally don't recommend the pinky finger hook. People will grab onto the hook with their pinky finger. That also then causes this ring finger to be tense, and then it causes this to happen. So that's why generally I don't recommend that one. The other ones are a little bit more optional or personal preference, um, but yeah, it's definitely something to play around with and experiment with. And this is why it's super important to modify your tab and do all that kind of stuff as well. Now, before we move on to the next part, I just wanna show you these three pictures here of the three options for the thumb and the pinky position. These are from my website. So if you wanna read more about this, go to onlinearcheryacademy.com and you can go to the set position section and there's more detail about this. But these thumb and pinky finger options in terms of the placement will affect which hardware you want on your tab and then also where you wanna put that hardware. So for example, you can see in this picture, again, of Lee Woo Suk's hook, you can see he's got a little 
uh, shelf, but he hasn't put that shelf at the top like a lot of people do to, to anchor on the, the jaw. He's put that shelf a little bit lower down to rest his thumb because he has his thumb kind of like a, a 45 degree angle like that. And he's put that shelf there to locate his thumb in a consistent place because if the thumb height is different, then that's going to affect his anchor height. So you can see how you can use these different parts of the tab depending on what you need from it. Now, super important this part, modify your tab. I don't know a single top archer that doesn't modify their tab, but I know so many maybe club level archers or new archers that feel afraid to modify their tab. And this is natural because they're pretty expensive and it feels kind of wrong, like angle grinding your tab down. But just for reference, you've probably seen already, you can see here that this, this is my tab here. And you can see that I've, I've gr ground the top down here. I've ground the side here. I've also ground this surface here because it was too deep into my hand. So don't be afraid to really modify your tab, not just the leather, but also the, the metal as well. So grind it down, feel what it's like. And here again, is, this is a different picture. This is Kim Woo Jin's tab. And you can see here, he has also ground down the tab quite a lot. He's ground down the shelf. He's ground down the, uh, the top of the tab. He's also mix and match the tab. So this is a, an AAE Cavalier tab, but he's got a finger spacer from Fibix. So there's no need to just, you know, have the exact tab that came from the box. You must modify it. Um, and again, if we go back to Li Wu Suk's tab picture, you can see on the top face of his tab that the, the metal has been ground down there. So he's also modified that. So I deeply encourage you to do that. I know it feels wrong, uh, especially because they're kind of expensive, but it's really, really important. It's kind of ludicrous to think that a random uh, generic tab is gonna fit your specific hand. And it's the same as with your bow grip. So those two parts, the tab and the bow grip, are really important to modify. And I'd encourage you to, to get the angle grinder out <laughs> and then uh, start playing with it. Now, before we get onto the next point, I just wanna take a moment to mention my online archery video courses. I've made two courses, one for beginners, one for advanced archers, and they cover everything you need to know to take you from a new club level archer all the way up to having elite world-class technique. So check those courses out. There's a link down below. Uh, and the website is courses.onlinearcheryacademy.com and there's also a 10% discount in the comment section below. Now back to the video. Now let's talk briefly about the angle of the spacer in terms of if it's pointing up or down. If you are struggling and you're touching the knock with your middle finger, then obviously if you angle the spacer upwards like that, that's gonna make the middle finger go like that and possibly contact more. So if you're struggling with middle finger contact, possibly angling the spacer slightly down, obviously not this much, I'm just doing it to demo, angling the spacer slightly down might help with that. But if you angle the spacer down, it's more likely you'll start maybe contacting with the index finger. So you can use this angle of the spacer to help you if you've got any finger clearance issues. But it's important to remember what I said before about the leather. Make sure your leather trimming is correct, otherwise it will be kind of uh, trying to fix the issue rather than the real cause of the problem. So I definitely encourage you to look at that first. So thank you for watching. If you haven't already, make sure to tap the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll be back next week with another tab video to give some more info on, on some extra bits there. And thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.